All right, strength training for runners tonight. We don't need anything except ourselves, actually. Yeah, we don't need anything. If you have a weight, um, bring it so that you can use it for our main set. We're going to be doing squats and squats. So bring your weight if you've got it. Otherwise, um, you are all set. Nora's here now. We're, yay. All right, so that means we can do this. All right. So everyone, go ahead and join me, put on your music, do what you need to, and let's get in some good posture. First of all, you have to like metaphorically or actually throw away whatever you were just doing, get it out of your mind, and let's get in a super deep breath, stand as tall as you possibly can, and let's do some hip hurdles. So start on whatever side you feel like it, and just hold one, uh, that one-legged stance. Good. All right. Hi, Felicia, glad you're here. All right, so make sure this part of you is super still, as still as possible. And this is the only thing that's moving, just that right side there, good. All right, and let's switch it up. So switch to the other side, good posture again, and perfect, all right. You guys know what to do. Yes, off with the socks, off with the shoes if you don't need them. I was at the podiatrist today and I was clear to run. Yay, so that's exciting. Anyway, I, she was asking me about what I do for healthy feet. And I said, well, I work out three times a week in my um, bare feet. And that seems to have been the most helpful. So that's the thing I'm most scared of about stopping classes is stop there, is that I'm going to have sore feet again. All right, so let's get into this wing position. Now, what I want you to do is have your feet a little more than hip distance apart. The wing position is so we can think about getting wide. We're opening up our chest, but without the expense of squeezing our back. So I want you to think about being as wide as possible. Then we're gonna hinge and bring our arms forward. So exhale as you come forward. And then inhale as you come back up to that wing position. You're inhaling and everything comes out. So you're trying to get your shoulders out as far as possible. And then let's get back to the exhale as you hinge. Yes, all right. Come on back up. This time, I want you thinking about your feet. I want you to not have your the pressure on your toes or your heels. Center on your whole foot. So equal pressure, come back up. And one more time, let's practice that practicing getting our whole foot in the game, coming forward and inhale up. Excellent. From this position, squat up to balance. Other side, squat up to balance. Good. Only go as low as feels good for you. And when you're up in this balance position, this other glute is tight. So the standing leg, glutes tight, glutes tight. So you know if you have time to stand up, squeeze your glute, then you've practiced that good balance. You're not just going from side to side and using momentum. Excellent. All right. Yes, if you got a little of this going, it's just because you're drumming to whatever you're listening to, I'm sure. Air drumming is totally acceptable. Let's keep this going for five more seconds. And then we're gonna get some single leg hinges. All right, so single leg hinges, what we're gonna do is stand on one foot and then we're going to get into our one-sided hinge here. And I want us to think about getting super long and then we're gonna sort of bird dog here. So elbow to knee and then super long. Go ahead, I'm gonna start the timer. I'm gonna walk you through it. When you're getting super long, I want you to think about glutes tight as you push your heel back. Think about reaching for something with both your foot and your hand, squeezing that glute and then elbow to knee. So we're never coming up to tall. We're staying in that bent over position. If staying in this position is really hard, get near the wall or a chair or put your finger there if you need to so you're not just falling over all the time. 10 more seconds, but you're trying to really just go for that reach and then come back together. We're really challenging our foot here core stability, challenging our soul, three, two, okay, go ahead, other side, so go ahead into that hinge position, get nice and long, 
glute is tight when you're really long there, helping you stay up. And then elbow to the knee. Good. All right. Hi, Maria. Glad you're here. All right. Keep this going. We're doing this for 40 seconds. Good. Maria, if you want to do both feet so you can catch up to just warming up, we've done one side, you'll be uneven. So just do regular hinges while we finish this one. And then we're going to get, we have 10 more seconds. And then we're going to get down on the ground for some 90 90 hip movements there. So finish this up in three, two. All right, join me on the ground. We're getting into that 90 90 position. So that's when our feet, or excuse me, our knees are what we're focusing on for 90. If this is uncomfortable for you, it's totally fine to switch out the position. But what I want us to do is try and get into this switch position. So if that's impossible, this is how you regress that one. So this is the start. If you can, getting into this switch position. Sorry, this would be the second round where you have your hands helping you, but you can get there. Now, once you're here, you can progress this one more to the lift, get full extension on that front side, come back down, switch it over, come back up. Yes, look at those flexible hips. All right, good. So keep this going. We got 10 more seconds here. I feel like I'm like, I don't know. I feel like I look like I'm like Lando or something when I'm doing this position. All right, three, two, go ahead and lay on your back. We're gonna do some open books. So that's when we have, lie, when we're lying on our back, we've got our arms open with our palms up to the ceiling. One leg is uh, extended. Let's all extend our left leg and take our right knee. We have our right knee bent and like to get our right knee over on our left side, keeping your hands down on the ground. So the back of your wrists, your wrist is on the ground, trying to keep your shoulder on the ground and trying to aim that knee for the ground. Aspirational. If you're not touching your knee to the ground, everyone loves you and you're a good person. There's no need to worry. Mine is currently not touching the ground. No judgment zone. All right, now take a really deep breath out. See if you can let that knee just fall a little more as you're relaxing into this position. Think, I'm cool, I'm relaxed. Knees coming down, getting a little more mobility, awesome. All right, let's switch sides. So bring yourself back up, extending that right leg, bending the left, and then left knee comes over. We're keeping our left wrist on the ground, trying to keep that left shoulder on the ground and trying to get that right knee towards the ground. As you exhale, you should feel yourself sort of melting into this position. Might get your knee down a little bit more. As your body relaxes, your muscles are like, oh, okay, nothing's going to rip here. I'm fine, everything's cool. So get in a couple more, two more really deep breath cycles. And then we're going to come up in five more seconds, three, two, just into a hands and knees position. Let's get into a hands and knees position. Now, I always like to make sure we're in good position when we get into your hands and knees. It's easy to be in sort of a junk position with your back arched. So I want you to actually have your back, your pelvis tucked just a little bit. That makes sure your back is not arched and it's safer for your lower back, should feel good. Now let's take our right hand, raise it like we have a question, bring it under our body into threading the needle, trying to get that right shoulder down onto the ground. Again, if it doesn't touch the ground, everyone loves you and you're still a good person. All right, you can either hold it down or come back up. We got 20 more seconds, so you can either hold in that position or come up and down as feels good to you, whatever it is. Make sure you have a big exhale at the bottom so you have enough space to really get into that stretch. If you have a full chest of air, it's harder to squeeze down in there. All right, three, two, let's readjust our tabletop. Let's raise our left hand like we have a question. All right, under, let's go. Shoulder down, 
Good. Come on back up. And if you want to stay down, that's fine. Whatever you want to do, you've got the next 20 seconds are yours. If you stay down, that's great. You can keep doing the breaths like we did for the open books where you release, you breathe in and out. And every time you release, you try and get down just a little bit lower. We're making sure we have some good movement through our spine. Five more seconds. All right. And three, two, now. Stay on the ground. Let's get into a frog squat position. So we're staying nice and low. So for your frog squats, we are again aspirational here that our heels would be on the ground. This is going to be my goal of the winter. My heels are currently not buddies with the ground, but I want them to be front. So I'm going to work on this one. Now for me, I can do it if I have a counterweight. So if you have your weight nearby, you can use it. Or if it's really uncomfortable in this position, you can have one foot down, the other foot's up, and then switch sides. You can move around in this position or keep it still. We're going to do 20 more seconds, actually 30 more seconds in this position. So whatever it is that's comfortable for you, that feels like you're getting a good stretch both through the ankles and through the groin, do that. Hi, Tracy. Glad you're here. Tracy is here back from the Jackson Oh, I think I got that right. Marathon, congratulations to you. Yay. And glad you're back. All right. So we got 15 more seconds. So if you're feeling like, wow, this is heavily uncomfortable, um, you can move through this position or you can just sit it back out. But we've got five seconds, so you don't have to wait for too long. All right. Let's move from this into a low lunge stretch. So we're into this stretch where we can twist up. So this low runner stretch with the twist up, we're putting our chest towards our knee, one arm up, then go ahead, switch sides. So switch your legs, chest comes towards your knee, arm comes up, good. So you notice in our warm ups, always making sure we get that movement through our thoracic spine. Some of these movements are really good for you to do before bed, when you wake up, and before runs. We don't want that to be an area that's tight for us. Back pain stinks, so let's keep it mobile. All right, keep switching sides just like you're doing. Nicely done, everyone. Keep this going. All right, we've got five more seconds. Yeah, looks good out there in TV land. Hi, Tanya. Sorry, I missed you. I didn't say hi. All right. And three, two, staying down. We're going to do planks with the shoulder top. So what we're working on here is keeping our hips in the same plane, not moving them at all. So everyone go ahead and get into a tall plank with me. And then the wider your feet, the easier it is to stay stable. Make sure your shoulders are over your hands and let's go for it. Tap one shoulder, nice and slow. Tap the other, nice and slow. Your tempo should be really slow. If you think, am I doing this too fast? You probably are, it's totally fine, slow it down. If you have to whip your hand back down, try widening your stance, that'll make it easier. If you think, are my hips moving? They probably are. So really, again, widen those feet so that you can have a more stable base that will make it easier. We've got 10 more seconds, so keep this going. We're gonna finish up then after this with side planks. So again, in these last five seconds, don't hold your breath. Three, two, nicely done. All right, you can flop on the floor. We're gonna get in those side planks. You all know what to do. I'm not even gonna say it. I'm just gonna get into the side planks with you. So here we go, 30 seconds, come on up. If you've got good positioning and you feel good, you can either stay in place with tight glutes or lift and lower your leg, do some kind of crunch or a twist. All work for me, but making sure you're always coming back to a great position where your shoulders are stacked and your hips are stacked. All right, there's five more seconds. And three, two, nicely done. All right, let's do it again on the other side. We're just going through it once this time. Everybody, let's do it. Come on up. All right, if you're just holding in place, 
See what it feels like to squeeze your glutes. See if that feels any different. Should feel easier, like you're sticking in place more. Should make your lower back feel great. If your neck is forward or your head is forward, readjust, realign, get your head back. Should be in line with your spine. Don't forget to breathe. Nicely done, everyone. Now we're at five more seconds to go. So staying strong here for three, two, nicely done. All right, get a drink while I show you our drill set. So our drill set today, we are working the muscles we don't get to in these small movements that we don't usually do on our own. So first things first, we're gonna do hamstring lifts. So we're gonna do one side at a time. Um, what we're working on is feeling here. So when you lift up, it's not just up and down. If I do that, I think I could probably do that all day. What I'm trying to do is lift at, like I'm squeezing a ball right here and then coming back down. So that's the first thing. The second thing we're gonna do is a butterfly glute lift and then go into some ab work. So it's going to look like feet together on the floor. We're gonna squeeze it tight, which brings our glutes up, squeezing tight here. And we're gonna hold. Then we're gonna change the position, bring our feet up here, squeezing our feet, and then looking through, keeping our back on the ground, squeezing tight. So let's start with our hamstrings. All right, so everyone, nicely still here. Actually, I'll do it from the side, otherwise you can't see. So we are going to do 30 seconds per side. Everyone, make sure they're not a big arch in your back. Let's go for it. Lift, squeeze, lower. All right, if you feel like, oh my God, I'm gonna get a cramp in my hamstring, overdosing, okay? There's no need to overdose here. Also, if you feel like, wow, after 20 seconds or so, I'm good, that's okay. I don't want you to do so much that it feels like you did this on Friday, or I mean on Saturday and Sunday, okay? You should feel like you did this, maybe you feel it tomorrow, but, should not leave you long lasting pain. All right, five more seconds. And then we're on to the other side. All right, switching sides. Good. If you feel like this is uncomfortable for your knees, having a pillow under you is absolutely fine. You can do that. The trick of this one, of course, is the squeeze, right? This lift and lower, not effective. So don't do that. All right, and if I see anyone's face like, ah, and they're cramping too much. All right, five more seconds, and then we're gonna go into onto our backs with our feet together. All right, on your back, feet together, everyone. So again, the feet stay on the ground, but you push your feet together, go for it, push your feet together and squeeze your glutes. So now you should feel it through your inner thighs, glutes, you feel your butt on the side, even glute medius is working. So the back of your butt, the side of your butt, inner thighs, really squeeze it up here. If it feels like, wow, this is too much, lift, release when you need to, and then come on back up because we're gonna do 15 more seconds of this hold. Good, breathe here and really squeeze your feet together. If it feels too easy, squeeze a little harder. Five more seconds. Good, three, two, stay in the same position, bring your butt down, and now our feet come up. So your feet are up, and I want you just to bring your neck and head, so you're looking through that little hole in your feet. Now, squeeze your feet together again, look through, and we're holding this. You should feel this through, well, everywhere probably. That's great, we're gonna do this for 15 more seconds. So if it feels too easy, really squeeze your feet together. If it feels too hard, put your neck down. That's totally fine. Just relax there. All right, we've got five, four, three, two, sweet, drop it. And we're going through one more time. All right, so back to that hamstring position. Everyone nice and tall. Well, as tall as you can be for kneeling, you know, three quarters as tall. All right, here we go. Squeeze and release. It's hard to do hamstrings at home because we do deadlifts for hamstrings and most of us can lift a lot more than you think, most more than you have at home. So these kind of movements seem sort of silly, 
but they should be effective. Hopefully you'll feel this in your hamstrings, like you did something. Good. All right. And five more seconds. And then we're switching sides. Three, two, go to the other side. All right. Cool. Let's do it. So I was telling the Monday class about some of the things I saw at Ironman. Amazing to see them running after 2.4 miles of swimming and 112 miles of biking. The men's winner went a 236 and the women's winner went a 251. These are smoking fast times. Stop there. Get on your back. So that was really cool to see that in person. I mean, obviously seeing marathon runners do their craft is faster, but this is pretty intense after so long working out. All right, so everyone's feet are on the ground. Now go ahead and push through your feet. Butt comes up. All right, we are squeezing tight here. So we're doing a full 30 seconds of squeezing through in that butterfly position. All right, I can see almost none of you. That's great. And if it feels too easy, I want you to squeeze a little bit more. Really try and get your glutes up and off the ground, not following at all. 10 more seconds. If it feels too hard, relax. Take a couple second break and come back and join us for these last five seconds. Four, three, two. All right, butt down, feet up. And have your feet come down a little lower to the ground until you feel your abs working, but make sure your rib cage is pointed down. So right now your neck is on the ground, head is on the ground, rib cage is pointing down to the ground, your lower back is on the ground and your feet are out in that butterfly position. Now squeeze your feet together. If you wanna make it harder, bring your head and neck up. We're gonna hold this for 15 seconds. So get in the position that you want and we're holding it. Well, now it's 10 more seconds. So this should feel tough because you've already been holding it but that's okay because you are also tough. You are more tough than this butterfly hold. Perfect. Three, two, nicely done. All right, so stand it up. All right, so we are going to do our balance set. Our balance set, we are doing a lunge with a twist and a single leg squat variation. So the First thing is you can join me on this one because I know you know what to do. We are going to step back into a lunge and then we're going to twist at the same side, but our knee, that front knee does not come with us. So this is anchored here, but you are moving this way and this way. So you really have to use all of your body to anchor yourself, not having your knee follow along. That's the wrong way. All right, everyone, let's go for it. First side, whichever side you want side to side and just keep that going. So we're just moving side to side. Don't let your knee come with you. Knee is anchored. Everyone's probably quad is like, hey, what's going on here? I thought we were buddies. Can we stop now? You can, but not for, well, five more seconds. Okay. And three, two, flip it over, get to the other side. All right. Anchor that knee. Let's go for it. Good. If this is a problem for you, if you feel, I mean, I don't see it, but I don't see all of your hips. If this feels hard for you, something to practice. If this feels easy, having some weight in your hand will help, or just in one hand to throw you off balance. That will make it harder. And three, two, good. Come on up. All right. I promised a single leg squat. So that is coming down into that single leg squat here. And then we're going to just lift and lower. So this leg doesn't touch the ground. It just stays up. So we're going to see if we can hold that single leg squat for 30 seconds. Come on down. Ready? Pick one side up. Here we go. So it's just like we're doing those side lifts, but we're doing it from that bent position. Good. So again, if you're doing this one and it feels easy, you can lift up and stay up into this pulse position. Wow, that is very hard. And um, you cannot put it down. If it feels too hard, put your foot down in between and then lift again. Good. All right. I see all kinds of balance strategies. I love it. Three, two, woo, come on up. Now my quad feels like, thank you, but that hurts, come on back down, other side, here we go, 
All right, whichever works for you. So staying up here, that's obviously the hardest. Whoa, I'm not even balancing. Gosh, this foot has got to come around. All right, balance will come back. Stay positive. All right, so keep this going. Nice, keep chest up, eyes up. You're not looking at your foot. Don't need to do that. Five more seconds. Three, two, nicely done. All right, so that was one time through our balance set. We always do it twice. So we're gonna start back with that lunge and the anchored knee. All right, everyone's good to go. All right, stand tall, step back into that lunge. And here we go. If you want to try it with your eyes closed, do it. Make sure there's nothing breakable around you. <laughs> nice. But you might as well try, right? To see what happens. Close those eyes. Might make it hard, but in a way you can still do. That's great. Five more seconds. Or you can twist a little more. Three, two. All right, other side. Good. Some of you are like a statue there. Okay, come on down. Good, this is our last time. So you can do only small movements if this is hard. Make those movements bigger if it gets easier because the more you twist, the more your knee is going to want to come with. Knee does not get to come with on this road trip. All right, and five more seconds. Three, two, nicely done. Okay, single leg squats. Come on down. Here we go, one side, whichever side you choose. Let's do it. Good. All right, and again, if it's too easy, stay up there, challenge yourself. You are here to get the work done. If it's really easy, what's the point, right? So you might as well make it tough, but if it's burning so much, you can't do it. No, there's no point in that either. So find that sweet spot. Three, two, go right to the other side. Let's just get this done, you know, so we can get onto the real squats. <laughs> All right, good. Eyes are up. Don't look at your carpet. You do not need to see what's down there. Look at something that makes you happy or at least out in the world. Good, five more seconds. And three, two, nicely done. All right, get a drink of water. I will show you our main set. The main set today, we are going to do tempo squats. So a tempo squat is when we are changing the tempo or using the tempo to increase the difficulty. So for the tempo squats, we're gonna do a four count down and then we're gonna hold down for two, come up and go right into that four, two, one. The second thing we're gonna do, sumo squats. So we're sumo squats, regular tempo, and then we're going to do a 10 second hold in this position. Then we're going to come down and do some hip pops from our back. So you know those, but I'll show you when we get there. So if you want to have a weight, if you've got a weight, you can absolutely hold it up here at your chest level. Or if you've got something heavy and you want to, you can absolutely hold it here down between your legs, as long as it's not pulling you forward. We're not doing a hinge, right? So it should stay upright. All right, you choose. All right, here we go. Four down, one, two, three, four, hold for one, two, upright, one, two, three, four, hold for one, two, up. Okay, you choose your tempo because for some of you, this might feel too hard and that is okay. You choose if doing just a regular squat is your thing, that's fine. Or if you feel like, oh, this is way too easy, you can do a tempo a little longer or hold it down at the bottom a little longer. Good, 10 more seconds. And five more seconds. Nice, all right. 
switch your position. So feet are out, knees are out. I was kind of in that position already. Sorry, I wasn't modeling the best squat form there. I was sort of stuck in my sumo. All right, but now our feet are out, knees are out. Let's do it. Come on down and up. I want you to think about this one. You are probably coming down to where you start to feel your inner thighs and then coming right back up because it starts to get hard there. These are smaller muscles. See if you can get to that spot. Go one more inch down. That makes it tough. Good. So see what happens when you don't stop. I don't want you ripping anything, of course, or breaking or straining anything. But instead of coming up when it starts to feel hard, give it just a little bit more time. All right. We're going to do that 10 second hold in three, two, one. Here we are. So now you're in that sumo position, trying to have your chest and shoulders right above your hips, breathing through for three, two, one. All right. So the hip pops, for those of you who haven't seen, they are in this sort of dead bug position. And then you're going to try and get your feet to tuck your hands and then not come down forward at all. So everything's going to be up, touch, staying up. All right. Let's do it. 45 seconds on the clock. You're on, you're on, you're on. All right. I see nothing but feet flopping around and I love it. Good. So we're trying to get our feet really like up to the sky, up to the ceiling, and then don't let them point to the wall. We're trying to keep them away. Really use that stability that you built all through your core after two years of doing this with me. Do not let your feet come down. 10 more seconds. So if you need a break, take one, just relax, and then resume with us for the last five seconds. And three, two, nicely done. All right, good news. We get to do that two more times. Yes. All right. So we're back to the squats. Grab a hold of your weight. Even if you've got 10 pounds, right? We want to keep progressing ourselves, not just doing the same things. If you haven't been doing it for a while, not having weight is a great idea. Totally fine. But if you've been doing this while having that weight. All right. For your squats, your feet do not need to be perfectly forward. A little bit open is fine. Whatever your comfortable squat position is, that's that athletic stance. Like if someone was running at you, you could push them away. Let's go. Down for four. Hold for two. And up and right back down for four, hold for two. Good. You pick your tempo now. One that's comfortable for you. And good. All right. The other thing I saw at Ironman besides very fast running was a new product that I am not familiar with that looks like a joke, but it's like a headband with crystals on it. Maybe you guys have seen this. Okay. It's not like crystals like someone would wear on a necklace, but like little squares. It looked like maybe hair was sticking out because they're brown, so it's super weird, but apparently they're cooling crystals, and I don't understand, haven't seen those before, but my guess is they are not rocking the world, I think. It sounds kind of woo-woo, but we'll see if these come into ultra running. All right, and let's get into sumo position, so feet out, knees out. Again, challenge yourself not to stop when it starts to feel the stretch, but when you are at the bottom of your, of your mobility. All right, here we go. Down, good. If you're using weight, sumo squats are great for having the weight under you and really making sure your shoulders are not here, but back and your shoulders stay over your hips. Yes. All right, everyone looks very much like they're like that, on, especially when I can't see the weight, but that's all right. Look like that. We're going to do five more seconds, and then we're going to do that hold. Three, two, 10-second hold. So you're coming down, just hanging out. If it feels hard, think about something else, or actually pretend it's easy. No big deal. It's just 10 seconds. Three, two, all right, back up. Everyone, on your back, on your back. All right, before we get started with any kind of popping hips, I want you to make sure your rib cage is pointed down and the lower back is on the ground. Here we go, pop. Really try and get your feet to your hands and then return them. Now, 
it's harder to get your hips higher off the ground. So if you're only getting your hips an inch off the ground, that is fine. And you are a good person. Once again, everyone still likes you. If you get them two inches off the ground, see what happens. See if you can get them a little higher. Totally up to you and whatever your strength is. All right. I see all different things there. Some people coming way up. Some people just an inch. And that's great. Whatever it is for you, for some people, these might have been impossible just two months ago, and now you're doing it for 40 seconds, which means five seconds to go. Good. Three, two. Beautiful. All right. Let's do this one last time. All right. Grab a drink, quick sip, and then our last time through. All right, getting into that tempo, whatever works for you, here we go. Four down, one, two, three, four, one, two, right up, one, two, three, four, one, two, up. All right, you're on, you're counting, but see if you can not rest too long at the top unless you need it, which is totally fine. Good. So this is how you make it harder, right? Doing a squat like that is a lot easier, having to go nice and slow, and then that hold makes it harder. That's why we do it when we're using body weight. Good. 10 more seconds. If this is starting to feel tough, just stand there and relax. Totally fine. Otherwise, you've got five more seconds, so finish strong. Three, two, great. All right. Everyone, let's change our body position. Feet out, knees out. So knees always are tracking like over that second toe. All right, here we go. Come on down. Good. If you are not holding a weight of some sort, you can have your hands up in this pray for balance position on your hips, whatever feels good to you, maybe in the open hands, you know, cookies are going to fall from the ceiling position, does not matter. All right, good. See how low you can get. Nice, all right. And five seconds and we're gonna get that 10 second hold. In three, two, come on down. 10 second hold, good breaths, good attitude. Halfway there, three, two, Awesome. All right. On your back. All right. We're going to set it up well. So don't just start popping up your hips. I want you to make sure first back is comfortable. We've got time. Let's reset our position so they're strong. Low backs on the ground. Rib cage is pointed down. And 45 seconds on the clock. Go for it. All right. Going for it. Last weekend, was a big ultra weekend. I had someone finish the Moab 240, had someone finish the golden six hour race and someone finished the man against horse, well, woman against horse, but you know, men. So anyway, super fun. The point is why I'm telling you, well, because you're doing this and you need someone to talk to you. So it makes it more fun, but there's lots of things for coaching. There's so many cool races out there. My offer is good for asking me about race planning. Five more seconds. So if you want to talk about races, I got it. Three, two, done. Nicely done. Okay, but of course we're not done because there's always going to be some kind of jumping set so we can get our power in. Our power set tonight, we're working on hips. So we are going to do lateral jumps. Get a drink of water, everyone, while I'm showing you. Now, my lateral jumps aren't that exciting. I want yours to be starting from this very low position and really getting a jump over. If you're not jumping, you're gonna duck under. And then broad jumps. So broad jumps will be our second thing. We're gonna start low, end low back pedal, do it again. All right. And if you're not jumping, you can do calf raises, 
holding on so you can get really high range of motion. All right, so let's start with those lateral jumps. We're gonna go through this four times. We're gonna do 20 seconds of lateral jumps, 20 seconds of broad jumps, 20 seconds of break. All right, everybody ready? Let's do it. 20 seconds. Good. Now, you can pick up a weight, just keep going, but if you wanted to, you can pick up a weight for next time. And absolutely do these with weight. Three, two, all right, broad jumps. Go right into it. 20 seconds lateral jumps, 20 seconds broad jumps. Land them. If you are coming forward, if you're falling forward or ending up on your tiptoes like, whoa, you're jumping a little too far for what you're ready to land. I want you to stick the landing. So I'd rather you jump a little less and nail it and then start. Really push your hips forward. Three, two, break. Everyone take a break, take a break. 20 second break. And then we're going back through. We've got three more times. So we're working those hips side to side and forward and back. 10 seconds to go. Don't kick anything. All right, three, two, here we go. Side to side, good. Yeah, see how far you can get. If you are not jumping, totally fine. Duck it under, you can use your weight. You can use your weight while you're jumping too, totally good. Don't let the weight come anywhere near your face, please. All right, and let's switch this up to a broad jump. Broad jump, start low, end low. Yes, I love when I see you right here. Yes, good, good. Making sure your whole foot is involved in that landing or you're doing your calf raises, good. And three, two, take a break. All right, 20 second break. And then we're back at it. 20 seconds is gonna start going faster and faster, but two down, two to go, almost there. All right. All right, everyone take in a nice deep breath. Clear your space. Here we go. Good, side to side. Nice work. Yeah, I see some really big jumps. If you're using weight, your jump might be less big, but that's okay. It should be in an arc from hip to hip. All right, three, two, lateral jump. You can absolutely jump with your weight too. Makes it harder, but that's okay. Nice. Back pedal with those jumps. Good. I like it. You're sticking the landing and like not getting up right away. I like that. I want to see that you stuck it and then come back. Three, two. All right. That was three times through. One more time to go. 15 seconds and we're going to get back at it. Take your deep breath. Drink your water. I don't know. Give yourself a jazz hand. We're going in three, two. Let's go. Good, big jump. Measure it, see if you're jumping the same as you were when you started. Maybe you can see your carpet, your, your feet marks in your carpet. Maybe you're using uh, the concrete lines or the lines in your floor, whatever it is, try and get the same thing for three, two. All right, last 20 seconds here. Really push your hips forward as you uncoil. Nice landing. Yes, come on, come on at me. Nicely done. Keep this going. Five more seconds. Three, two, yes. Okay, thank you guys for spending some Wednesday night quality time with me. Before you can go do whatever you are doing, tonight I am going out for Ethiopian food. I'm very excited about that. But before we can do that, we have to cool down. So everyone go ahead and come into a forward fold with me. Widen your feet so that you can get your fingers down on the ground. So I want you to have your feet as wide as needed so you can have your fingers on the ground. Because we're going to walk them out just a little bit. See how long you can get your back and really just opening up through your armpit. So push your hips back as your feet, your fingers are on the ground. You should feel this behind your legs, to your back. This should feel good. Now stay in that down position. 
push your hips to the right side. You should feel stretched in the groin on the left side. <clears throat> Going upside down is not doing anything for my voice. And now push it to the left side. Awesome. All right. And back to the middle. Walk your hands back. Walk your feet in. So now your fingers are off the ground and you're just hanging there. Hang your arms, hang your neck. Very hard to relax your neck, but try it. Now roll it up nice and easy. Roll it up until your hands are up, up, up. Your thumbs are behind your head. Your glutes are tight or your pelvis is tucked so you don't have a big arch in your back. All right. Now step back with your right. Lift your rib cage. See if you can get that lifted just one inch. See if you can get your heel down in the back. Good, and other side, other side, get that heel down, rib cage up, yes. And just like that, we are done. Oh my goodness, okay, there's not very many classes left, so keep on coming. I think there's, oh my gosh, are there two left? I think there's two left. Anyway, come to those classes. I'm so glad you're here. Have a good night. I'll stop.